we are hauling a uh, Clorox load from Georgia. I'm headed to Texas. I believe it's Roanoke, Texas. Our appointment is actually tomorrow at 4 p.m. Well, I'm gonna get there today. I'm gonna try to get there by 4 p.m. today. We're gonna see if they unload us. <laughs> Sometimes the fact that I'm a woman, they let me get away with some stuff. So if not, then we'll go with plan B. We have about 408 miles to cover today, between about seven and eight hours. It should take us to get there. I'm gonna skip breakfast this morning. These last few days I've eaten breakfast a little heavy and just been kind of tired. I think I'm gonna skip breakfast and maybe not eat until about uh, maybe 12 or so. This is just what I do as a trucker. I put in the address that I'm going to to deliver and I look at the reviews for whatever place it is and that gives me a lot of insight it can prepare you for a lot. Driving this big truck, one of my biggest cautions when driving this huge truck is I don't want to ever get in a place where I can't turn around. On the reviews, it said, you know, it's going to be very muddy, a lot of big holes. Like, anyway, when you plan really well and you know when you're going to start, when you're going to end, where you're going to shut down. When you get to appointments early and they take you, some, some places are very strict with appointment times, but some places are like, okay, you here, let me just get you off and on your way. The earlier we get unloaded, the quicker we can get to another trip and we can cover more miles and get paid more money. Also, I park next to a black female trucker and I don't know y'all, it's just something about seeing black women out here on the road. It just makes me feel so much more secure. <laughs> I know, you know, she gonna get in her truck and go to sleep, right? Like, not mess with me. I see, you know, women truckers, but not very often, but definitely not black women truckers. So, it's gonna be a great day today. This trip is a total of 918 miles. It's actually a little bit more than that. I want y'all to understand that when you get around a truck, a, you know, an 18-wheeler, anything big, be very cautious and just get out the way. <laughs> a lot of times people just get, I don't know, they get around us and they think because we drive slower that they should drive slow. Your slow and our slow is two completely different things. Your slow, you can take off and, you know, move much quicker and gain speed much quicker. But when you get around us and you slow us down, it takes us much longer to gain speed back up. That creates traffic because when I have to slow down and gain speed, so do the 15 cars behind me or the 15 trucks behind me. This load is heavy, y'all, and I can feel it in the steering wheel, in the gas pedal, in the brake, everything. I think we are at 79,000 and some change total. The trailer alone is like just shy of 45,000 pounds. The drivers don't like these loads, that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> but yeah, so y'all have a great day until later. Did y'all subscribe? If you ain't subscribed, you need to subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and subscribe to the channel, The Travel Trucker. We're just trying to build a community. I'm um, taking y'all on this journey with me. People have been telling me for years to go ahead and start a YouTube channel and just kind of document and let people see what we see as female truckers on the road and my new camper life. Instead of me driving four weeks out of the month on the big rig, I'll drive three weeks out of the month on the big rig. And then, well, three weeks or so. And then the last week or less than a week, I'll go travel in my camper. Where this came from is that uh, truck driving, I get to see a lot of places, but I'm not able to stop. I'm not able to really go and explore places. So with the camper, I'm able to dig a little deeper into the United States. My purpose for this channel is to really open people's eyes to the possibility of seeing things and traveling and doing more things uh, with you or with your family. Coming through Shreveport, Louisiana. You ask any truck driver, any truck driver, Everybody know about Shreveport. These roads are trash. I'm talking about the trashes of the trashes. Where is the money going? It's not going to these roads. Y'all see how much I'm bouncing? This is the road. This is not the truck. It's the road. It's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. I hate coming through here. And it's like miles and miles and miles. Horse and money with an engine. <laughs> like, all this bouncing up and down. These roads are trash, y'all, trash. I don't know if the cars feel it the same or if it's the push and pull of the weight of the truck or something. I don't know. But it feels absolute. I'm not even going there. Like, falling in the back, something fell. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I can't stand it. 
thing that coming through here. Not only are the roads bad, but there's only two lanes coming through here. And those two lanes, we got to be in the right lane. So all the trucks drive in the right hand lane on some raggedy roads, which make them even more raggedy. Tell Louisiana to send the money where it needs to go. Oh my God. Send the money where it needs to go. Where's the money, Louisiana? Where the money? Cause it's not going to these roads. Okay, y'all, so it's a quick change of plans. The driver gave me the information. I had just realized that I was coming through this way. I was like, wait a minute, I can go to this little spot that I was trying to get to. The name of the place is uh, Solman's Barbecue. So I'm excited to try it. It's, uh, you remember I said I skipped breakfast, so it's actually time for me to take my break. I'm hungry. <laughs> so I'm gonna go in, try it. But it looks like it's good. Y'all ever went to a place and you pull up, you be like, this look like it's gonna be bomb. First of all, let me just say it only took me 30 minutes to go in there, order, get my food, sit down, eat, use the restroom, and leave. That says a lot about <laughs> the experience. I got beef brisket, smoked sausage, mac and cheese, and cabbage. I didn't know the cabbage was spicy. I didn't like that. <laughs> So I normally don't even order smoked sausage, but behind the glass, it looked really good. So I was like, well, let me try that. You know, mac and cheese is iffy. I like my mac and cheese, okay? So like when I eat somebody else's mac and cheese, especially from a restaurant, theirs is like Velveeta type cheese. Yeah, so nasty. Um, So it was decent. Everything looked really good. <laughs> now, the brisket was really good. It was very tender, and with the barbecue sauce, it was really good with that. The toast was good. I got a piece of toast with it. It was it was a little hard around the edges. I'm real picky about stuff because I cook my food a certain way. Like I like my food to be quality. I think that my expectation was too high. You know how when somebody tell you about something, they be like, "Ooh, it's so good." Da 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 da. This and that, and this and that, and this. And then you get there and you're expecting do 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 and woo woo woo, and that's not. <laughs> what you get i ate all the brisket all the bread a little bit of cabbage just because it was vegetables and my mom would have been like and then the mac and cheese was just it was too creamy all in all i would give it like a seven out of ten and then the guy who was serving me was just kind of rude i was stuck behind this old lady she was just taking all day order she was so cute but she was just taking so long i was like lady <laughs> what you want what you come here for order, <laughs> order what it is you want I should have stuck to my Dallas spot. I might go by there tomorrow for lunch, maybe. But, you know, I also realized I, I worked in, you know, the restaurant industry for a while. You know, some places have good days and bad. Well, all places have good days and bad days. Maybe I should give them another chance, y'all. I don't come through here often, so maybe I'll give them another chance. It's a good little spot. It's got the little truck parking and everything. It's cool. So, anyway, we have 109 miles to delivery. I would say about two hours maybe a little less but we've been rolling making good time so yeah i will catch up with y'all at the delivery go and see cross your fingers because i don't know okay y'all so <laughs> it's been a long day i was nervous pulling into the receiver because i thought they weren't gonna take my load but it worked out i'm so excited they were not able to unload me early but there was actually an empty there so i dropped my loaded trailer and picked up the empty trailer worked out perfect so now I came to the loves to shut down. I have to get a shower and I have a very, you know, like a little small load of clothes, clothes I need to wash. Uh, all day tomorrow, I will probably get some cooking done so I can kind of like, I don't want to say meal prep, <laughs> but just have some food in the refrigerator that's already cooked that I can just warm up versus cooking it fully, which reminds me I need to take my steak out. So tomorrow's house cleaning, truck cleaning, <laughs> but it's been an amazing day. The food I tried was not terrible, but it could have been better. <laughs> The day has done, I mean, I love that y'all can come and, you know, hang out and watch my videos, but I don't want to take up too much of your time. I hope everybody's doing amazing. Um, I pray that everyone's safe, healthy, becoming wealthy, all that good stuff. So, 
without further ado, we're going to take a day off, get some things done. And um, in the meantime, I would say let's ride, but we're just going to chill. <laughs> I'll maybe do a couple cooking videos tomorrow if I do decide to cook tomorrow. Um, so, yeah, that's the update. I hope everybody's safe. Y'all be easy.